A good evening, good Sunday evening to each of you. I'm glad that you joined me at church time. I'm sorry I'm running a little bit late. It's uh, It's been a little bit crazy, crazy of a day, but uh, you know, uh, God is good and it was an amazing day. And so I'm so just so glad that you uh, you joined us this evening. I hope, uh, hope that each and every one of you are well. I know that uh, I am sitting here counting all the things that uh, we're going to be telling our grandkids one day uh, <laughs> that we we got to experience in 2020 and 2021 and uh, you know 20, uh, 2008 you know the stock market crashed and I mean anyways just another thing to tell our kids right um, another thing to improve our endurance and and teach us things about ourselves, right? And no, But I do really hope and pray that each and every one of you are safe and sound, and hopefully you have electricity now, and hopefully you have water, and um, and things are getting better for you. I know that, uh, I mean, unless, unless you grew up somewhere where this is very um, common, then, uh, you know, last week was a little bit of a, a shocker to you and your system. I know it was for me and my family. And so I just pray that uh, you are safe and you're sound and that all your family is too. So we're going to pray that together here in just a moment. I just, uh, just want to say that uh, I sure enjoy being with you each and every Sunday evening. So let's pray together, and then we're going to continue to look at God's Word and uh, see what's next in this Christian walk, this Christian journey. All right, let's pray together. Father God, we just come to you right now. We just thank you for this day. We thank you for, thank you for seeing us through. Thank you for 68 degrees as I rolled the window down today and drove home from church and just enjoyed the sunlight and still the remnants of the snow uh, were on the ground uh, but you God were in control the entire time and and none of this was a surprise to you and father we just ask that you would just be with those right now who are still uh, who still need power or still need water clean water and um, for those that that need food we just pray father that you would just connect them with the right people that you would just um, get them connected and lord that you would just keep them safe and watch over them father god we just ask that you would just um, continue to go before us father and, and that we put our faith hope and trust in you and lord i just pray uh pray for for new life, uh, for our friends uh, Henry and Kim, uh, praise God, and we just thank you for that. We thank you so much uh, for all that you've done for our friends and our family. Father, you just watch over each and every one of them. Lord God, you would just heal those who are hurting. Father, continue to be with those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, and you would just put your peace that surpasses all understanding on them. Father, wrap your arms around them, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just ask that you would just... Uh, Lord, help us to look more and more like you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So yesterday, well, yesterday was Saturday, but uh, last Sunday I asked the question, uh, where did I come from? And we looked at Psalm 139, uh, 13 through 15. We looked at Genesis 1, uh, 27. And, and we just uh, talked a little bit about how God created you. He created me. He created everything and he did a really really good job at it and uh, as I was thinking about that and I was thinking about how uh, that tied into to today's question today's question is what does God want with me what does God want with you uh, it just got me turning it just got me thinking right uh, about about um, you know, why in the world is, did God do all this, right? I mean, what, what happened? And, and it does go back to that, that garden where God created you, he created me, he created male, he created female. And then this serpent creeped along. And, and you can find that in, in chapter, uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Genesis. And it talks about that, Adam and Eve... And it says in chapter 2, 
verses, uh, excuse me, verse 25. It's the last verse of Genesis chapter 2. It says, And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. And at that point, they, uh, they, um, They weren't ashamed. They didn't even know they were naked. You know, they uh, they had they didn't even realize that they were, and so there was no shame. But whenever chapter three happens, they um, they realize that there's some shame, and they're ashamed. And you know that, that feeling. Uh, you know that feeling, right? You get that like ah, uh, you you have done something. Uh, before God, or you've done something uh, to someone, and and you're just ashamed to talk about it, right? I know that uh, sometimes we have that conversation with our boys. We ask our boys hard questions, and they and they kind of look at us, and and they, they hang their head. You know, they just and they don't want to tell us the truth. They don't want to tell us what happened. You know, that that's what shame is, and it's related to sin. It's related to sin. And because of the fall, because the serpent came along and, and said, you know, did God actually tell you not to eat from that tree? Did, and, and they went ahead and they ate from it? Well, sin entered the world. And so when sin entered the world, it disrupted, it messed up the relationship with you, me, everyone with the Father in heaven. Because man, God would go down to the garden, he would hang out with Adam and Eve, and then after that, in chapter three, they hid. They, they weren't playing hide and go seek. They hid because they had shame, because they had, uh, they had messed up before God, and they had made a choice to disobey him. And so they sinned, they sinned. And, and that's, that's when we live in a fallen world. That's what, when I say we live, we live in a fallen world, and it's not the way it was intended to be, right? And that's where we, we get self-image issues, right? Where, where we, we think that, oh, man, God did a bad job. And, or, or, and, that's, and that's where lying comes from, and cheating, and murder, and, and sin. That's Genesis 3, where that comes from. And so that brokenness, that image of being, uh, of being, you know, of that, that self-worth, that shame, that's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. And, and yes, God created the heavens and the earth, and he created you, he created me. He didn't do, he didn't do it. He was flawless, flawless. But sin, sin entered the world, and it messed some stuff up. Okay, it messed some stuff up. It perverted some things, lots of things. Okay, and so, but but listen, what does God want with you? What does He want with me? He wants us to repent. He wants us to repent. So Matthew four, Matthew four seventeen says this. It's one of the first things that Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew. He says. <clears throat> From this time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in my Bible, that's in red. You, know, you should highlight that. Repentance. Repentance. That's what he calls you and he calls me to do. I want to look at one more scripture, too, that talks about repentance. It's in Second Peter, back here in the... The crispy section, as, as though they say, it says in Second uh, Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. What's this idea of repentance? Well, First of all, I think that we need to be made aware that, that we do sin, that we do fall short of God. We, we, we are born into the sin. And, and if you have been around a baby before, a, a toddler before, you know that there are these tendencies. We didn't teach our children that, but sin is affecting them, right? Sin is affecting me. 
It still is. Even though I know Jesus, I believe in Jesus, it's still affecting me. Now, what does the word repentance mean? Repentance means to turn away and go the other direction, right? I was watching the boys play our Atari. We have a little Atari. Maybe some of you know what this is. It was a game system from the late 70s and the late in the early 80s and you would shove this game in there and you would uh, play with a one stick and a red button right and so they were playing the Atari and it is you know 2D they were playing this little game uh, called Maze and it's this little bitty spider looking thing and Landon and Logan are actually in there and they're going through a maze right they're going through a maze and they would go down a dead end and what would they do they would turn back and then they would eventually find the end of the maze. You know what, as I was watching though, one of them always would go down the wrong dead end and the other one would always, bing, win. And at that point, that one little guy, whether Lando and Logan, what are that one little guy that went down the wrong dead end, he didn't have a chance to go back and turn away to find the end of the maze. You see, God wants us to go down this road of life, this journey of life, and He wants us to repent. He wants us to turn away from those sins and go the other way so that we can spend eternity with Him in heaven. And so as we, we think about that concept of repentance, uh, we, we can, oh, well, I, I haven't confessed that sin to God yet. I haven't repented of that yet. You, you, you can take those to the table as you go through life. But coming to Him and realizing that you initially need to repent, to call on His name, to be going down the path of life, the journey of life, and know and believe that God sent His one and only Son to live for you, for me, and for the whole world, but then to die on a cross, to shed his blood, so that he could, so that he would wash our sins white as snow. And so we, we believe that, we come to him, and then we repent. We turn around, and we go the other way, right? And, and for you guys, uh, you know, if you're driving down the wrong path, it's hard to turn that car around and go back and ask for directions or go the go the wrong way, right? You just want to keep going forward. Whether it's wrong, whether it's right, I'm going to go this way. No. God wants you to turn that car around and go the other way. He wants you to repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, uh, so, so Jesus died... This, this, he died and he washes us white as snow to set the right relationship with you and me and the whole world right with God. To cover the sin, to cover the sin, to cover the sin, to set the relationship right. Now, who does he do it for and who is he looking to do that for? Uh, what does he want from you and what does he want from me? He, he offers it, he extends this invitation to everyone. That's why I read the second Peter passage. He says, but everyone to come to repentance, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And so scripture tells you and me that Ephesians 2:13 and 16 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you were once far off, have been made brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what he wants from you and what he wants from me. He wants you and me to, to be in relationship with him. He wants to reconcile us to God. He wants to restore that right relationship in heaven. You know, when that happens, scripture tells us to put off the old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, right? Taking off this dirty, dirty clothes, throw it in the hamper and putting on Christ, right? Taking off the former manner of life and 
that's deceitful to get rid of the deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. That's Ephesians 4, 22 and 25. So, so what does he want from us? He wants to be in relationship with us. He wants us to repent, turn them, and then he wants us to put on the new self. The new self. It, you know, it's kind of like changing clothes, like I suggested a moment ago, right? I mean, you just think of that, the dirtiest moment you've ever been, right? You're dirty from head to toe. You know, even, even your socks are dirty, right? Take off that old man and throw it in the hamper. And began to put on the new self in Christ Jesus. You are made anew in him. And that's what happens when you repent and when you turn to Jesus. When you turn your eyes to Jesus and repentance begins, you become a new creation. Oh, man. And that's because of his grace. Because of the grace that he extends to you and to me and the whole world. That's why it says he doesn't want anyone to perish. Anyone. He wants everyone to come. To, he wants everyone to come. But not everyone does come. And, uh, you know, that's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking more for God. Because God created you and me and the whole world. And so when those don't come to him, you know, I can just imagine it breaks his heart. It, you know, I don't want to get too far into this new self because that's a whole nother lesson. But know that God loves you so much that he sent his one and only son to die for you and to cover a multitude of sins to make the relationship with you and the Father in heaven right. And when that's right, we repent we ask God, God, forgive me. I have, I have sinned against you. We turn the other direction and we keep going the other direction. And we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. And we look right here to his word in order to get the instructions on how to look like more like Jesus, like more and more like him. We spend time in prayer. We join a fellowship. We go to church. We listen to uh, sermons. We listen to teachings. We, we study God's word. Those are all the ways that we begin to understand. We're taking off that old self and putting on the new self because he loves each and every one of us that much that much. Well, I hope that I've helped you answer the question, what does God want from, from you today? What does God want from me? What does he want from everyone? hope I've helped you answer that question a little bit today. Next week, I want to ask the question, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? And we're going to take a look at chapter, uh, at Luke, chapter 10 and chapter 9. And if you want to look at that already, look at it. Where do we go from here? Because we, we know what he wants. He wants to be in a relationship with you. Let's pray together, and I'll see you next week. Father God, we just come to you right now, and we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you that it's clear that you have called us, called us to repent, to turn to you. The kingdom of heaven is near. And Father, that you have extended that invitation to everyone, everyone, because your blood is that powerful. Your plan is that perfect. And Father, I just pray, Father, that uh, as we continue to look at your words, continue to ask these questions, and as we, Lord, draw near to you, Father, that we would look more and more like you, just like the word said, to put on the new self, to look like you, to talk like you, to smell like you, and to react like you, Father, in all the ways, Father, may we be a reflection of you, wherever we are, with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors, that, Father, we would just love one another, that we would love you, and that we would just go and we would reflect you, that new self. Lord, we love you, and we praise you. 
It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and see you next Sunday.